Welcome to today's walk with Dr. Roger Spradlin from Valley Baptist Church, the program helping you to understand the Bible today. Welcome to today's walk. I'm Kate Neighbors here with Pastor Roger. Now today we're going to continue our look at the Ten Commandments and today's commandment is probably the one that I dread the most as a child. When I would hear this one, I could hear my parents reminding me, <laughs> honor your father and mother. <laughs> well, we gotta be clear. It starts out that way as a kid, uh, the obey your mom, mother and father. Yes. But then it's always honor your father and Yes, mother. that's true. There's a difference. There is a difference and we're gonna talk about that. So let's jump in and watch part one of the principle of honor and respect. Today we're looking actually at the fifth commandment, which is found in Exodus chapter 20 and verse number 12, where it says, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The title of the message today is called The Principle of Honor and Respect. The 10 commandments basically have to do with relationships. The first four have to do with our vertical relationship between us and God. The first commandment, God says, have no other gods before me. The second commandment, he says, don't worship anything that is a carved image or that has become an idol. The third commandment, he says, do not take my name in vain. The fourth commandment has to do with our balance in life, the balancing of work and worship and rest. So the first four commandments really are between us and God. The last six deal with the horizontal relationships that we have with other people. He said, do not covet what your neighbor has. He says, do not lie. That obviously applies to all relationships of life. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery, which applies to married life. Do not murder. So the Ten Commandments are really rules for relationships. Sometimes when we think of the Ten Commandments, we think of them as being kind of tough rules that God has somehow given for his sake. But the commandments were given for our sake that we might first of all learn how to relate to him in a, in a healthy way. And then we might learn to relate to one another in a healthy way. Because healthy relationships, beginning with God and then beginning with others, that's really what produces happiness within our life. So the commandments are a blueprint for blessing. Now the second part of these commandments that deal with relationships begins with the most fundamental of all human relationships. It says, honor your father and your mother. We may not all become parents, but we all have parents because that's the most fundamental of all human relationships because it's the first one. The first word that a little child usually learns is mama or dada. If we could just learn to get that relationship with our parents right and learn to live with a sense of respect of how we relate then we'd have much less difficulty in all the relationships of life. Now, even though the Ten Commandments, they're given mostly in the negative, thou shall not, thou shall not, each of them have a very positive principle behind them. And the positive principle of, of this commandment is honor and respect. But I think we'd probably all admit that we're now living in a very rude world. Common courtesy doesn't seem to be so common anymore. Respect for other people and for other people's property or respect for institutions is at an all-time low in America. Our, our favorite humor, it seems like today, is put-down humor. Now, if you don't believe that, you just watch late-night television. And the, the favorite target is to put down those that are in authority of any kind. And yet the Bible teaches that we're to honor our parents. The Bible teaches a wife is to respect her husband. The Bible teaches a husband is to love his wife. The Bible teaches that we're to respect even government. The Bible teaches we're to respect church leaders. Perhaps... The number one test of genuine, authentic faith is healthy relationships. 
because our belief at some point determines our behavior. If Christ really invades our life and he takes up residence, then he should at some point deal with the rudeness of life and make us people of honor and people of respect. But with this commandment, not only is there a principle, there's also a promise. In fact, this is the first commandment where a promise is clearly stated. Let's read the commandment again. This is Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and mother, uh, and then here's the promise, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. It's further clarified in the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Honor your father and mother, it's quoted from Exodus, which is the first commandment with a promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. So God promises long life to those who keep this commandment. Now, I don't think there's anything magical here. It, it doesn't work like that. Rather, it's this, that if we learn about relationships in the home, then we'll have a healthier life because we'll have less stress throughout the rest of our life. The stress of life comes primarily from relationships that are either strained or broken, don't, doesn't it? I, I mean, uh, how, how we relate to our boss, those over us, can cause stress. How we relate to those under us in authority can cause stress. Or how a husband relates to a wife, or how a wife relates to a husband, or how a parent relates to their children, or how a child relates to their parents. All of that can cause stress. Stress in life comes primarily from human interaction. It comes from relationships. And God is saying if we can learn to operate with a level of respect in relationships that we learn primarily in the first relationship with our parents, then that spills over into every area of life. And we're going to have less stress in life, and that's the effect of that can be enormous. It can affect not only our health, but even the longevity of our life. Now, I want to spend most of our time today, though, talking about how we keep this commandment. So it's kind of a how-to sermon. How are we to honor our father and mother? Well, it varies according to different stages of life, obviously. Here's the first principle. A child or a young person is to honor their parents by obedience. Listen to what the New Testament says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 20. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Did you notice that it said it's well-pleasing to the Lord? It doesn't say that if you obey your father and mother, it's going to please your dad, although it will. It doesn't say it's going to please your mom, although it will. It says it's well-pleasing to God. How we interact in human relationships one with another affects our relationship with God. Six out of the Ten Commandments have to do with how we get along with each other. Now, I grew up in Oklahoma, and so uh, for all these years that I've been in California, we have, our, as a family, we've traveled back on I-40 uh, to see my parents in, in Oklahoma. And we always cross what is called the Continental Divide. And I've always been kind of fascinated by that, because if a drop of rain falls on this side of the Continental Divide, then theoretically it eventually makes its way to the Pacific Ocean. If it falls just a few yards on the other side of the Continental Divide, it eventually makes its way to the Mississippi and to the Gulf of Mexico. So two drops of water that start out very nearly in the same place end up in radically different places, hundreds and even thousands of miles apart. Children are like that sometimes. They grow up in the same home. They have the same parents the same environment, essentially, the same genes, and yet they end up in drastically different places in life. Now, of course, of course, it has to do with our own volition. It has to do with our will. It has to do with the choices that we make and the cascading effect of those choices throughout our life. But I think that sometimes the differences can be traced, at least in the genesis of it, back to how they obeyed their parents how they learn to relate 
in that fundamental relationship of life. Young people, if you're a young person, then if you disobey your parents, it's not simply a matter of weakness. It's actually a matter of wickedness. Listen to what God said in uh, Romans chapter 1. He, he gives us, I think, the list of the grossest catalog of sin compiled, compiled anywhere in the New Testament, maybe anywhere in the Bible. It says, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of all uh, of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. They not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. This is an awful litany of sin. And right in the middle of it, did you see it? Did you hear it? It said, disobedient to parents. He says, and anyone that practices these things is worthy of death. Wow. And in the Old Testament, if a young person was rebellious against their parents, it was considered by Israel a capital crime. And they were, at least in theory, I don't know how much this happened in practice, they could be taken outside the city and stoned. Now that would be a radical population control of teenagers, wouldn't it? Did you know that God said that disobedient to parents is a sign of the end of time? One of the questions that I'm asked as a pastor about as much as anything is about the end of times and what I see on the horizon, of what's going on in our culture. Are we in the end of times? What, what, what's the signs of the end of the time? How are we going to know? Well, Paul wrote Timothy in uh, uh, 2 Timothy in chapter 3, beginning verse 2, and he's talking about the end of time of what it'll be like. He said, for men will be lovers of themselves, narcissists, lovers of money, that's greed, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. Paul's saying in the last days, it's going to get worse. It's going to get bad. One of the marks that he gave of the last days is that children are going to be disobedient to their parents. And he says, when you do that, you have a form of godliness, but do you deny its power? If you're a teenager and you talk about how much you love Jesus, but at the same time you're disobedient to your parents, then God says you have a form of godliness, but it may be phony. Uh, perhaps your faith is not real or your faith is not really penetrated to the degree that it should in your lifestyle. So how do we honor our father and mother? If you're a child or adolescent, adolescent, you do that through obedience. You might also, and I'm just going to throw this in, this part's for you, right? You might just honor them by helping out in the home. And I know every mom just loved that I said that. I saw, saw a mom in the last service give a big elbow to a child sitting next to them. So, some young people have the idea that their mom is their personal maid, which of course is not true. I heard about a girl that she asked her dad kind of flippantly, she said, I need some mom to hit the flick. She, what she said, what she meant to say is, I need some money to go to the movies. But he didn't understand her first. I need some money to hit the flick. And so finally figured out what she said. saying. He said, no, but you can swish the dish, spread the bed, and flop the mop. <laughs> you know, some young people's bedroom looks more like a city dump. I'm convinced there's toxic, hazardous material in there somewhere under the bed or deep in the closet. I don't know. The book of Proverbs says that a son that sleeps in harvest brings shame to his father. You're not willing to help out. Not only might you be in rebellion, but God says it's shameful. Maybe we should just move on. 
Because most of us in the room are not children. This commandment is not limited to children or to teenagers. There's a point where we outgrow obedience to our parents. But here's the next principle. There is never a point in life where we outgrow this commandment. You know why? Because this commandment in its pristine form, which we find in Exodus chapter 20 when it was first given, does not say obey your father and mother. The New Testament interprets it that way for a child. The commandment actually says honor your father and mother. And honor is always to be there. And how we learn to relate to our parents affects every other relationship of life. Sometimes people say, well, I'm never going to be like my dad. Or someone will say, well, you're just like your mother. And we react so much to the past that we're handicapped in relating to the present. I don't know how many marriages have been wrecked, completely ruined, because of unresolved anger towards a parent that eventually was focused upon the spouse. For those of you who are single, if you're contemplating marriage at some point, then you need to kind of check out how your date treats their parents because that's probably how they're going to treat you. A guy tends to treat his wife eventually like he treats his mom. Now, that's a scary thought, I know, for some right now. Girls tend to treat their husbands at times like they treat their dad. How is it then that we fulfill this commandment when we're grown? How how do we honor our father and mother? I want to give you some practical ways that we as adults can honor our parents. Here's the first principle. We honor our parents by recognizing that God chose them to be our parents. Theologically, that's the sovereignty of God, the providence of God. You say, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. I didn't choose my parents. Well, guess what? They didn't choose you either. (laughs) I mean, you might not have been their first choice. I mean, come on. If they'd have been given a choice, but they weren't given a choice. You say, oh, well, you don't know my parents. You don't know how strange they are. The lights are on, but sometimes no one is at home, you know. Uh, I don't mean that you ignore their mistakes that they've made. And I don't mean that you pretend to be perfect or you pretend that they're perfect. I I, I don't even mean that you have to agree with all they did in in raising you up. But at some point, if you're a believer, you have to recognize and realize the sovereignty of God that he chose them to bring you into the world. Your parents offer you something that you can't get anywhere else. Life. You owe them your life. You say, wait a minute, they're not even Christians. They're, they're horrible. They're wicked people. And you want me to honor them? You honor the position. I'm not saying you honor their lifestyle. I'm not saying you honor their character if it's deficient. You honor the position. If you enter a courtroom, you address the judge as your honor. And they may be the biggest creep in town. But you say your honor. You're not honoring the character. You're honoring the position. You're you're honoring his or her position. And that's what God wants us to learn early on uh, in life is to live with respect for authorities within our life. Here's the next principle. Honoring our parents at times involves forgiveness. You know why? Because we tend to hurt the people that we love the most. They're the closest to us. And many times that's unintentional, but sadly, sometimes it's intentional. And it's so easy for bitterness to grow in a family and to even become generational if it's not taken care of through forgiveness. So forgiveness has to be a part of honoring our parents. With pop psychology, ever since Freud is blame everything on your mom, blame everything on your dad, all the hangups that you have somehow is there fault. And and the fact is, they do have a lot of influence upon your life. But as an adult, we all choose how to live. We choose whether we're going to have faith. We choose our behavior. And and that's not to minimize the horrific things that happen in your childhood, but there is a point in our life where we choose how to react to that influence that was upon our life, whether it was good, bad, or ugly. Here's the next principle. 
We honor our parents, I think, by willingness to listen to them. I've discovered that parents, even parents, whose lives are in a shambles, have a pretty good handle on what makes their own children tick and can actually give you good advice. And you may be thinking, well, there's so many things. There's a lot of things my parents don't even know. And that's true. They probably don't know the new math, and that may be a blessing. And if you give them a new computer or a new smartphone, you may have to turn it on for them. But there's some things that they do know. Let's say you decide to go on a trip, and you're going to drive. It's a road trip. And you're going to drive all the way across the country. You're going to leave the West Coast, and you're going to go all the way to New York City. And you're driving, driving. You get to, let's say, Flagstaff, Arizona. And your parents are on the same trip, only they are ahead of you. They're in Arkansas. And so they call you, and you talk a little bit. And they're able to say, well, you know, there's a certain road that you're going to, that's under construction. You ought to take a different route because it could cost you a lot of time. And there's a nice little restaurant in this one town. Man, it's just fantastic. You ought to stop there. Uh, and there's a little side excursion. It's just the most beautiful spot. You, you ought to think about going there. And there's a motel. Do not stay there. I mean, you've got to make your own bed. It's like hammers and saws. That kind of make your own bed, you know. You see... They're further down the road in life than you are. It doesn't mean that you obey them throughout your life. It doesn't even mean that you have to follow their counsel. But at times, their counsel might just save you a lot of heartache, and you should be willing to listen to them. Here's the next principle. We honor our parents by acknowledging the effort and the sacrifices that they have made on our behalf. For some, that's no problem. I have been privileged to have a godly mother, taught Sunday school for 60 years, and a father who taught me to go to church and love Jesus and tried to impart Christian values to me. So it's been no problem for me to both accept and appreciate them. But even if you have had a difficult relationship with your parents, you can find something to appreciate and honor them for Perhaps the effort in raising you. Parenting is difficult. It's, it's time demanding. If you're a parent of children growing up in the home right now, you know that. When our children were small, I, I, I spent virtually all my free time when I was not working. We spent it with our children going to this event and that event, being in this gym and that gym for athletics up, being a taxi driver, taking them here and there. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Even if, if you're a parent with a, a baby, I mean, think about it, even the effort of that. You know, the getting up in the middle of the night, but more than that, you, you, you've got to put them in this little cage or this little carrier. And, and as a grandparent, I've had to try to put them in the back seat. And if it's a two-door car, you know, just wedge them in there. And then you need an engineering degree to figure out how to strap them in. It's tough. It takes effort. Have you ever thought how much easier your parents would have had it if you had not come along? their life would have been so much easier. So maybe we can learn to appreciate the effort, but also their sacrifice. Parenting is costly. That was the first part of our message looking at the principle of honor and respect. Now you, you quoted some scripture. You were talking about how if we honor our parents, we're going to live long. Is that is that always the case? I mean, I'm not saying <laughs> well, that I'm yeah. good or bad at it. No. I, Kate, I think that a lot of people take it as a promise. I, I take it as a principle, oh. a general principle, rather than a specific promise. And I, I, I think it does affect your health in that sense. The, the greatest stress in our lives, throughout our life, is from strained or broken relationships. Mm. Oh, yes, absolutely. And stress can be very harmful Oh, to yeah. physically. I went for a yearly physical uh, last week, I guess it was. And uh, so the doctor, he's talking to me about my job and what I do. He goes, you have a lot of stress <laughs> in your life. <laughs> and and uh, he said, uh, then he kind of leans in. He goes, that will kill you. Oh, so, gosh. Well. And so stress will kill you. Uh, <laughs> he, here's the point I'm making. 
with our parents, that is the first relationship of life. Yes. If we can learn to get that right, I think it helps us in the other relationships of life. And if the other relationships of life are healthy, we're going to have less stress within our life and we're going to end up even physically perhaps healthier and um, have a longer life, certainly a happier life yes. for sure yeah. if we learn to honor our father and mother. And ultimately our heavenly father, we can honor him. That's a great point. And the way we honor him is to love his son. Mm -hmm. He loves us so much that he gave his son as a sacrifice for our sin. And the clearest thing in all the word of God is that we've all sinned. Yeah. It, it's actually, Kate, it's an archery word. It means to miss the mark. The mark is the moral perfection of God. And our life has been shot at that target and we've missed it. Uh, and so that's what sin is. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we've all sinned. Then the Bible says the wage of sin, the price for sin, is death. Yes. It's talking about spiritual death, to be separated from God. Right. Physical death is when our body and spirit are separated. Yes. Spiritual death is when our spirit and God are separated. So here's the good news, that God loves us. He sent his son to what? Die, Die. for us. Because the wage of sin is death. Right, exactly. So you're exactly right. The way to honor our Heavenly Father is to do what he's asked us to do, yeah. to to call upon the name of his son for forgiveness. One of my girlfriends growing up did not have a father. And so she would, coming to church with us, sometimes she would be very um, frustrated because, you know, talking about father and she would say, yeah. well, I don't have a father. And I would remind her, you do have a father. Yeah. Perfect um, father. Perfect father. Thank you for those words. I am sure that it is encouraged to any people who are watching today. Uh, parents are tricky and relationships are tricky. Um, God's love for you is not tricky. It is everlasting and it is unconditional. And there's a number at the bottom of the screen where people would love to open up the Bible and talk to you about your heavenly father show you what the Bible has to say about the things that Pastor Roger has been talking about. If you want a free copy of today's message or you want to share this message with someone else, uh, parents don't send it to your kids. I mean, that might look <laughs> a little funny, but we would love to give you a free copy of today's message. Find us todayswalk.org and definitely join us next week as we help you understand the Bible today. This has been Today's Walk. Today's Walk is the broadcast ministry of Valley Baptist Church. This program is supported directly by our church members and viewers like you. You'll find plenty of great resources when you call us or visit our website. Thank you for watching and join us again next week for Today's Walk from Valley Baptist Church in Bakersfield, California.